My name's Brandon and this is Nickelodeon Video Game History, a show where I take a look back on all of the video games based on Nickelodeon shows and retrospectively review them. As you can tell by the title and thumbnail, today's review is for the Rugrats movie. However, there's something important we need to address first. In between the release of Search for Reptar and this game, there was supposed to be another Nickelodeon title. Cat Dog Saving Mean Bob was slated for release in 1998 and would have been the only ever console Cat Dog game. There were PC games released, but nothing you could ever get on a handheld or home console to my knowledge. Information about this game is extremely scarce. Pretty much all we know for sure is that it was being exclusively developed for the PS1. The only other surviving info is a poster advertising the game. It shows off the game's box art and a couple of screenshots which imply that Saving Mean Bob was going to be a 2D platformer. Other than that, we know next to nothing. We don't even know why it was cancelled, and I'm pretty sure there's never been any confirmation of who was developing it. So, instead of Cat Dog saving Mean Bob, the next Nickelodeon game released was the Rugrats movie. Released for the original Game Boy in December of 1998, and the Game Boy Color on February 28, 1999, this was the first ever Nickelodeon game exclusive to a Nintendo handheld. Obviously, this game was designed as a tie-in to the Rugrats movie, which hit theaters in November of 1998. Nickelodeon were surprisingly late to the party with this release, considering movie tie-ins have been known to release before the film even releases. The Rugrats movie was an insane success for Nickelodeon, grossing $141 million worldwide and becoming the first non-Disney animated film to break the $100 million mark at the US domestic box office. Not bad for your first animated feature film. Seeing just how successful the film was, it seems surprising that there was never a console game released. Seems like it would have been an absolute slam dunk for Nick. The developer in charge of the Rugrats movie was Software Creations. Founded in 1985, they would be purchased by Acclaim in 2002 and become Acclaim Studios Manchester, which would prove to be a death sentence as they closed down just two years later. Software Creations have an exhaustive video game legacy. They just released so many games and covered basically every relevant media franchise that was popular during their time. This won't be the last time they pop up in Nickelodeon video game history either, as they developed Rugrats Time Travelers, the handheld version of Rugrats in Paris, Rugrats Castle Capers, and the PC, PlayStation, Arcade versions of Nicktoons Racing. The average review score for the Rugrats movie was a 5.5. It received a few glowing reviews that even reached the mid-7s, but there were plenty that dipped into the 5s and below. It seems like the Rugrats movie game was very divisive. Where will I fall on the side of this debate? From my research, the only major difference between the two versions is that the GBC version is in full colour. Naturally, I chose to play that version for the review. The game kicks off with an absurdly long credit sequence that plays out in complete silence. Thankfully, you're able to skip through all of this. Then, once you hit the main menu, you're presented with a few options. You have the option to play the game, as well as an options menu and a password system. Those who've watched my Real Monsters video will know just how welcome a password system is. Surprisingly, the game has a difficulty select option buried in the options menu. The game comes set on easy by default, so if you're older and deciding to check this out, you might want to swing by and change it. The gameplay is straightforward and simple, but scared me nonetheless. The Rugrats movie is yet another Nickelodeon 2D platformer. Your job in 90% of levels is to collect a certain amount of objects and then reach the end goal. Ren and Stimpy Time War PTSD flashbacks immediately hit me. This game isn't making a good first impression. It's basically combining all of the elements of previous games that have driven me nuts. Controls couldn't be more basic here. B makes the character jump. That's it. You can move the camera up and down with the D-pad, which was quite nice, but other than that, there's nothing else to say about the controls. So I started playing the Rugrats movie and I was immediately confused. The game explicitly told me that I needed to collect a certain amount of items to progress but collecting items didn't seem to do anything. I was grabbing every item I could in this first level, but it was only increasing my score counter rather than the items counter. Getting hit by enemies would cause me to spill some of my items, but the score stayed the same and again, the item counter was static. Eventually, I got to the end goal and successfully completed the level without my item counter ever moving. It was in the next level that this mystery started to unravel. 
Without initially realizing it, this level started with the item counter being on 18. As I collected items throughout the level, this decreased, with the objective being to have it hit zero before reaching the goal. Most of the levels from here on out have the item collection requirement, but there are still random exceptions at times. It's just weird. As I showed before, getting hit will spill your items. If you have no items collected or you fall from a height, you will suffer a death. However, in many levels, taking that initial hit is as good as death. You lose all of your items and unless it happens early on, there's a good chance you physically won't be able to collect the required number of items again. The game's fall damage is super frustrating too. It's extremely inconsistent about what height will instantly kill you, and the platforming can be kinda touchy, resulting in some annoying falls. Additionally, while the limited camera controls are handy, being unable to move it left or right means you're still taking leaps of faith every now and then, which inevitably leads to deaths. Despite far more resistance than I expected, I made it out of Tommy's house, and you're taken to the part of the film where the kids jump into the reptile wagon. The game briefly becomes an on-rails driving section. It's probably best described as a shmup, but without any shooting whatsoever. There are a couple of levels like this in the game, and they're more miss than hit. You're required to get through these sections unscathed, as a single hit will kill you, and you're forced to start all over again. The levels are pretty short, so this design isn't necessarily a bad thing, but because of some very shoddy hit detection, it becomes a mini nightmare. I swear to god, the hit detection is so unfair. There are times where I genuinely don't come into contact with an object, but it still results in my death. It takes what could be a fun change of pace for the game, and transforms it into an annoying routine of trying to discover how close you're allowed to get to an object before the game fucks you over. These are, at most, a brief pit stop during the game. The standard 2D platforming gameplay is what you'll be fighting through most of the time. One of the biggest issues with these 2D platforming levels is that the babies are completely powerless against enemies. I randomly discovered that jumping on a bird's head will kill them, but it will also damage you, so there's no real point to it. Aside from that, the babies can't attack. I get the idea behind the design choice, but I'll be damned if having just a basic attack wouldn't have made a lot of levels far less tedious to get through. Without an attack, the game is entirely focused on your platforming, and thankfully the controls aren't too bad. They feel a little stiff at the start, but I think once you get used to how they control, it's not too bad. By the end I felt comfortable and had adapted to the game, allowing me to make jumps with confidence. There is a bit of a learning curve though, which might be a slight problem considering the game is only 2 hours long. Purely as a game, the Rugrats movie is average. It's certainly better than a lot of the other Nickelodeon 2D platformers we've played so far, but it's certainly not a standout in the genre. I think where the game is at its poorest, aside from the lack of clear explanations early on, is how it adapts the movie into game form. It almost never feels like I'm playing through the story of the film, and rather I'm just playing a generic Rugrats platformer based on a random premise the developers came up with. You start off being told Tommy is trying to escape the house, before driving the reptile wagon away. I guess that kind of follows the film. But then the kids end up in the hospital with Tommy, Phil, Lil and Chucky all getting separate, extremely bizarre levels. These levels see you fighting genies, soaring through the sky, and exploring underwater. I know in the film the plan is to return Dill to the hospital, but they never actually go there. Instead, the devs included this extremely weird section. It sort of gets back on track after this, as you end up in the forest, having to track down Dill and such, but it never truly captures the magic of playing through the story of the film. On the flip side, I think the game's presentation is pretty damn good. I think Game Boy Color games can be very hit or miss when it comes to visuals, there's just something about the colour palettes that are generally used for these games that are a big turn off for me. Fortunately, I didn't find that to be the case here. I think the Rugrats movie looks pretty great. The backgrounds and level environments are well done, and I was a big fan of the sprite art for the characters. The soundtrack gets a pass from me too. Replicating the iconic vibe of the Rugrats soundtrack via the Game Boy is a bit of a stretch, but I think they managed to do as perfect a job as possible within the constraints they had. It doesn't sound identical to the show the way Search for Reptiles soundtrack does, but they definitely get across that extremely specific Rugrats vibe.
The Rugrats movie on Game Boy and Game Boy Color is a mixed bag. At times it can be extremely tedious to play through, and the fact that absolutely nothing is clearly explained to you throughout the opening few levels can be a massive turnoff. Once you get settled in, you've got a passable 2D platformer. It's not Nintendo level, but it's adequate. But just like Search for Reptar, it nails the overall presentation when it comes to visuals and audio. Arguably the only major misstep is that it doesn't really feel like a recreation of the movie a lot of the time. I don't hate what we got here, but I would have loved to have seen a 3D console version that tries to be a more faithful adaptation of the Rugrats movie. Overall though, I'd recommend this over nearly every other 2D platformer we've played so far in Nickelodeon video game history. As far as I'm concerned, Rugrats are 2 from 2 here. Next time we'll be looking at Rugrats Scavenger Hunt, which takes us back to home consoles for Nickelodeon's debut on the Nintendo 64. After the success of Search for Reptar, I'm keen to see what they can cook up on Nintendo's first 3D era console. To make sure you don't miss out, hit that subscribe button.